Welcome to the Recommended Daily Value Podcast, your daily dose into the health and wellness world. Welcome back to the Recommended Daily Value Podcast, where we dive into everything health, fitness, and nutrition related five days a week in five minutes or less. This podcast is brought to you by Umzu, and I'm your host, Tyler Woodward. Today, we've got another round of rapid fire questions for you guys from the legend, Hey Dude, aka Georgie Dinkov. Georgie, in 60 seconds or less, why pigs eating coconut oil don't get fat? Uh, because it basically drastically stimulates the metabolic rate. Um, it decreases the so-called feed efficiency. And farmers realized this back in the early 20th century when they were feeding their pig butter and coconut oil. So it's not only butter, but saturated fat in general that has a thermogenic and uncoupling effect and also stimulating the pyruvate hydrogenase, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain, while PUFA having the exact opposite effect, increases feed efficiency, which means you can get your pigs fatter on less food, which is awesome for farmers, very bad for us. The most important toxin, toxin to remove from your life? Probably endotoxin. I mean, basically, this is the one thing that, that occurs to us on a on a daily basis, more than once daily, uh, because when we're eating foods, especially ones that are produced and you know sold commercially, uh, they often contain endotoxin themselves or contain things that either trigger the release of endotoxin or very there may be carcinogens uh, or increase the synthesis of, of serotonin. Recent study on my blog showed that uh, benign food coloring, known as Allegra red, I think it's called, can directly cause inflammatory bowel disease, even in tiny amounts, much lower than you will find in even a single piece of candy. How PUFAs exacerbate the damage of alcohol, cigarettes, and sunburn? Mostly through the increase, as far as alcohol is concerned, because they increase the permeability of the gut, which we kind of mentioned earlier. Uh, so you get a lot more endotoxin coming into the into the bloodstream, which stimulates the inflammatory uh, mechanism, histamine, um, uh, serotonin, nitric oxide, but also because the PUFAs are precursors to the prostaglandins. And as studies have shown that if you administer COX or LOX inhibitors, you can actually prevent a lot of the damage that the PUFA does to the liver or to the body in general. So it's the pro-inflammatory and, syner- and endotoxin synergistic effect that is mostly responsible for liver damage. Uh, same with the UV light. Basically, the UV light damages the, these easily peroxidizable fats, and many of the products that they generate, uh, especially some of the, the alkydes, are directly carcinogenic and probably contribute to the to the uh, basal and squamous cell carcinoma. Not so melanoma. Melanoma seems to be also driven by PUFA, but through its estrogenic effects. Uh, because most of the melanoma cancers develop on spots that never see sunlight. In fact, sunlight has been shown to decrease the risk of dying from melanoma as long as you also are uh, cognizant of your puffer intake. The most important practice for boosting dopamine? Uh, avoiding tryptophan in the food, which I didn't mention, and avoiding basically the I- irritation of the of the gut. Because the, even though the serotonin, most of the serotonin is produced in the gut, as we mentioned, medicine keeps claiming that serotonin, once preformed, cannot cross the blood brain barrier. That has now been disproven. So, if you're producing a lot of peripheral serotonin, it will get to the brain. And serotonin and dopamine have an inverse relationship. They tend to inhibit the enzyme each of the other that synthesizes the respective amine. Serotonin inhibits the aromatic acid, uh, the, basically the tyrosine hydroxylase, while dopamine inhibits tryptophan hydroxylase. So if you get a lot of dop- a lot of serotonin in the brain, basically you're going to be inhibiting the synthesis of dopamine and you get a double punch. High serotonin and even lower dopamine than what just a higher serotonin will do. And last but not least, can nicotine be beneficial? Yes, I think uh, it can. Uh, nicotine is a very powerful aromatase inhibitor and some of the other closely related substances like cotinine and abacine that are also found in tobacco are also uh, very potent aromatase inhibitors and they're all tend to inhibit the degradation of dopamine. Uh, so it can have, like it's been already shown that people who smoke have a much lower incidence of Parkinson's disease. Um, but the problem with nicotine specifically is that it's an activator of the adrenergic system. So it actually increases lipolysis. So, and also it's, a, it's an acetylcholine activator as well which is not a good thing. It's a, it's a brain excitotoxic cut. So if you're taking nicotine or smoking tobacco, it's probably a good idea to take something that blocks the either adrenergic and or the acetylcholine system. Coffee is a very good one because it contains substances that can block both. And probably explains why Ray had this quote a long time ago that some people asked him like, well, if somebody is benefiting from smoking, what should I do? What should they do? Uh, and Ray said, make sure you drink a ton of coffee because it can block most of the negative effects. That was awesome, Georgie. Thank you very much for coming on. This is great. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. 
Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit that subscribe button and to share with a friend. And remember, these opinions are my own based on my own research and experiences and is not medical advice. So next time, be good.